So far, we've been talking about this mechanical loading stuff uh, purely as a function of putting tension into some some structure in the body. So I've been using the, the example of the Achilles tendon. And uh, we've been thinking about what happens when you put tension on it, meaning when you pull like this. But you might be wondering about, uh, especially with regards to bones, for example, what happens when you compress them? Because quite often the, the primary stress inside the body in your bones is not tension, but it's actually compression, right? You standing uh, on your two feet puts a lot of compressive stress into your bones. It turns out that stress strain curves uh, work just the same way uh, or work, uh, well, yeah, work the same way. Stress up here, strain down here. And you can do the same thing for bone. You can plot the stress as a function of strain. It goes up and then it'll go like this and then it'll break. Same deal, that tells us information about the stiffness, technically the elastic, the modulus of elasticity. This is uh, how much energy we store and so on. Uh, a bone is of course gonna be a lot um, stiffer than say a tendon or a ligament. So maybe the tendon is like down like this. But one detail though is that um, well, two details, one of which is that we've sort of implicitly had to flip around a, a negative sign. If you're paying really close attention, you'll notice that if you compress something, it gets shorter and not longer. Usually we just flip that around when we plot it and just kind of don't pay it any mind. But the other, uh, the other and more important technical piece to this is um, the shape of this curve, the stress strain curve, will change depending on whether you're doing tension or compression. Uh, for a bone, for example, bones are much stronger in compression than they are in tension, which kind of makes sense given their structural role. So maybe if this is, uh, let's say this is the femur in compression. If we uh, look at what the strength of the femur in tension looks like, meaning if we you know, pull on it like this, not really a force that the femur really experiences very much of, except from, from muscle forces. Uh, that might look very different. It might look uh, like this. might be not nearly as strong. And again, there's there's been kind of an implicit flipping of positives and negatives here, but um, don't worry too much about that. So that's interesting. And I want to use that to motivate uh, talking about these five different kinds of mechanical loading that I have listed up here. The first two, tension and compression, I, I think you're pretty familiar with. Um, tension being pulling on something. So I'm going to illustrate these with a, kind of like a rectangular box for reasons that will become obvious soon. So when we are putting tensile stress or tension into something, it's like we're pulling on it like this, and it's going to stretch out, right? If we're putting compression onto it, well, it's exactly the opposite. We're pushing like this, and it's going to squish together. The other three are more interesting. Torsion is like you're wringing out a towel. That's like putting a twist into it like this. Well, maybe let's say the base is secured, and we're going to twist the top of it. I'm gonna have to redraw this to, to show you how that would actually change the shape. So let's say we're gonna twist it like from the top clockwise. Let's think about what that would look like. That would be like maybe this. And this, way, so it's like kind of twisting like that. If that makes sense. So we're, we're, we're wringing it out like a towel. That's torsion. Shear happens when you have, uh, technically it happens when you have compression forces that are offset from each other, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's redraw a little box like this. And 
if you applied, let's say if you applied uh, a force like this and a force like this directly on the opposite side, you'd be compressing it in this direction, right? But shear happens when you take those forces and you offset them from each other. So maybe you got one force like this and one force like this. That's going to have the tendency to uh, kind of push this box like that, right? It's like a it's like a dinner table that the, the legs uh, don't work very well or aren't strong enough. It's going to shear it off like this. Then finally, bending happens, and bending is is something that's maybe more intuitive. Bending occurs. And it's going to look like, uh, let's see, try not to draw it too extreme, kind of like this. So, bending, this of course, this is a, an exaggerated version of it, but bending kind of looks like that. If you could imagine trying to flex, again, the original shape looking like. Uh, looking like that, bending being flexing it so it, it bends like this. Now there's one interesting thing about bending, which is that you can think about bending as being uh, tension on one side and compression on the other. So let me make a 2D drawing of this to make it a little simpler. So let's say we have a, say a bone, like the tibia, like this. And if you bend it, in fact, this, this actually is what happens inside the body, the forces of the, the calf muscles create this bending, this tendency to bend the tibia so it, it bends kind of like that. Again, obviously I'm exaggerating here, but what would happen is you get bending like this. And see if you can kind of get a few steps ahead of me on this. It's going to be one one of these sides is going to be experiencing compression and one of these sides is going to be experiencing tension and see if you can kind of figure out why that is as I clean up my drawing a little bit here. Suppose we'd put little like little um, delineate little like tick marks on each surface of the of our bone here like evenly spaced so we could you know see what was going to happen to them. Can you see how they would get closer together here and more stretched out here. This is bending and it's going to create tension over here because these are getting stretched out and compression just write comp for compression because I don't have room over here. This turns out to be a very important mechanism for the development, uh, especially of stress fractures. Uh, it turns out that um, if you could choose, it's better to get a fracture on the compression, compressive side. Where most people get, say, uh, stress fractures of the tibia, it's kind of back down here. It happens to be the area that experiences the greatest bending stresses. Um, tension is not so good because the body has a harder time healing because you could imagine the stresses of, say, walking around tend to pull apart whatever micro crack has already formed. So anyways, that's these uh, five forms of mechanical loading. When you hear me say the term mechanical loading, I'm talking about some combination of these things. And they're very important for determining uh, how the body reacts to mechanical forces that act on it.